All right, so we've already got the equation for the position of a particle with respect to time of an object undergoing, come on, simple harmonic motion. Motion. Just rewrite that really quick. Okay, but what about velocity and acceleration? Well, I know that velocity of anything is the derivative of x of position with respect to time. So I just need to take the derivative of this. Now x m is a constant, so we just leave that alone. Okay. Um, then I've got cosine of a function. I've got a, a constant times time, so I have to do chain rule. So first off, I do the derivative of cosine. And for those of you in calculus, you probably know that. But if you're not in calculus, you you, you don't really know that. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we're going to get negative sine. And what you do is you put, um, you just keep the same thing. OK. Then you multiply by the derivative of what's ever inside of there. So inside we had omega t. If you take the derivative of that, you'd find, you just get omega. So all together, this is what we get. If we, we're just going to move some stuff around and simplify it slightly, um, you get that the velocity as a function of time is, I'm going to pull this out to the front and the negative out to the front. So I get negative angular frequency times the amplitude times the sine of angular frequency times time plus the phase angle, phase constant. Okie dokie. So that's the velocity. Notice, what's the biggest sign can be? So this whole, this whole thing right here, the biggest it can be is 1. Okay? Can't be more than 1. So the biggest this can be is when sine is 1. Where, so when sine is 1, I get that the position is, uh, or sorry, that the velocity is negative omega xm. That's the biggest it can be, so the maximum velocity you can have is negative frequency, uh, angular frequency times maximum amplitude. Okay, We call that the velocity amplitude, or vm. Okay, So that's the maximum you can get. Now, where does that happen? When does that happen? Where does that happen? I have a cool, another cool little animation that will help us figure this out. Okay, so this is this is kind of confusing. Like, ah, what's going on? Okay, so right here, this is your position. Here's your your object undergoing a uniform. Uh, sorry, I was going to say simple harmonic motion. So this funny thing that's moving is showing you like as time goes on, what's going on. So see when this is at the very, very top, we are at the top of our um, our position. When it's at the very bottom, we're at the bottom of the position. Here's velocity. This is the derivative. Okay. Notice it's also harmonic, but we kind of have the opposite maximum. So like when our position is at a maximum, velocity is zero. When position is at zero, velocity magnitude is a maximum. Okay, when and then we do it again. When the thing is all the way at the bottom, that's its maximum displacement, velocity is zero again. When position is at zero going the other way, velocity is the maximum again. It just keeps cycling like that over and over and over again. Alrighty. Let's talk about acceleration next. So acceleration as you well know, acceleration as a function of time is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Okay, So we need to take the derivative of this. Well, the stuff out in front is a constant, so we leave it alone. Then I need to take the derivative of sine. The derivative of sine is cosine. Oh, just a second. All right, sorry, my microphone clip fell off. Okay. Um, okay, derivative of cosine, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 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 derivative of sine is cosine, so I do the derivative of that, but leave everything else alone. I'm going to do this this time. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Ooh, I'm going to run out of room. And then I take the derivative of what was inside the argument. So again, another omega. So I'm going to rewrite all that, clean it up a little bit. I'm going to pull this out to the front. What I get is negative omega squared xm cosine omega t plus phi. Alrighty. This is the equation for acceleration. And we do the same thing we did before for, to find the maximum. If um, the biggest that cosine can get is 1, so the biggest I'm going to get for A is when you have this stuff times 1, so you end up with um, the maximum acceleration you can have is this thing out in front. And we call that the acceleration magnitude. Alrighty. Also something interesting that, oops, sorry about that funk, I just hit my microphone with my hand. Okay, something else that's interesting, if you look carefully, this part right, right here looks an awful lot like this. Probably should have used a different color for that. Okay, in fact, they're the same thing, xm cosine omega t plus phi, xm cosine omega t plus phi. So we could, if we want to, if you want to, you could say that the acceleration as a function of time is equal to negative omega squared xm times the function x of t. Like that. You could do that if you, if you, if you want to. Okay. And let's, real quick, and then we're going to end the video, real quick, let's look at the uh, graph for acceleration. Notice, um, everything's been shifted again. So, if you look at velocity, whenever velocity has its largest amplitude, so like right here, for instance, the acceleration is zero. And whenever the velocity is zero, the acceleration is its maximum. Okay, just like before. If you look at the position graph and the acceleration graph, they have all of their maximums at the same time, but they're opposite signs. So like right here, the position is zero, so is acceleration. But right here, the position is its maximum magnitude, but negative, and the acceleration is maximum magnitude, but positive. So they're just kind of, they're kind of like opposites of each other, but notice the amplitude's not the same either. Okay, that's about it for that stuff. Do take note that as with every other like thing where we took we found velocity and acceleration by deriving, you can go the other way. So we could go the other way if we wanted to. We could say that um, velocity is the integral of a of t dt from, and you'd have to integrate from initial velocity to velocity, okay? And what this would give you is it would give you an equation for velocity at a time t. You can also do that position is the integral of um, v of t dt, okay? Um, where you integrate from initial position to position. And that would give you your position at time t. Yeah, so just remember you can go backwards with integrals too. That's it.